Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to do this insane zoom through effect. You can do this through anything in your music video like glasses, wheels of a car, watches, windows, doors, you name it, you can zoom through it. And I'm gonna show you how to do it really quick and simple. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe to the channel because I upload videos like this all the time. And if you haven't already liked the video, go ahead and do that. But let's get into After Effects. So here inside of After Effects, this is the effect that you're gonna be learning from start to finish everything from the VFX to the blending of it. It's quick and simple, but it's something that you should be using in your next video. Super clean. I love this effect. It's great because you can really do it in like any kind of music video. Very simply, you can zoom through eyes, glasses, like I said, car wheels, watches, phones, windows, literally anything. Just get creative with it and you can make a really cool effect. So to get started, you just need two clips and the second clip needs to be the thing you're zooming through. So make sure the second clip is something that you can zoom through. For us, we're going to be zooming through Trippy's red glasses here. So getting started, the first thing you want to do is go to the first frame of the second clip and go ahead and click control D. That's going to duplicate the layer and then go ahead and right click and go to time and then freeze frame. And basically what that's going to do is just freeze the clip. I'll go ahead and mute everything for now. You can see it's just going to freeze frame the clip, which is exactly what we want. So then we're going to go to our layer with the freeze frame and go up to the pen tool and you can do as good of a job as you want or as rough of a job you want. It really doesn't matter too much. You can just go rather quick. I kind of like to follow the curves of the glasses, nothing like super rough edges, but also at the same time, not spending too much time on it. It's going to be done rather quickly, just like that. And now you can see you'll have these glasses masked out by the clip playing behind it. So what we want to do is actually go down to the mask settings, open the mask, and then instead of add, we want to do subtract. That way you can now see there's a hole with the video playing behind it. That's exactly what we want. So now let's go like five, 10 frames before and actually drag out our clip. So now we'll have this clip like this with the clip playing in the background. I'll go like 10 frames forward and then we'll have this clip with Trippy's glasses masked out and the clip playing in the background. And we're just gonna go ahead and click Control Shift D to split it and then cut it right where that next clip comes in. So you can see it'll kind of go, like that's our transition now, which is getting already pretty close. So to take it to the next level, and this is what I think like kind of sauces up these zoom through transitions, is actually before you go ahead and do anything, pre-compose it and then move all attributes into the new composition and then adjust it for the duration as well. And click OK. And then inside of there, you can duplicate your layer and then on the bottom mask, go ahead and go to mask and then instead of subtract, go to add. And now it's just gonna be a freeze frame like this. But what you can do to make it a little bit more of like a unique transition is actually animate this in. That way it transitions in completely. So for us, we're gonna keyframe this position and have it down here. So that means like the first like half of the scene is gonna be the clear. That way you can see something behind it. And that's when we're gonna zoom through. And then towards the end, I'm going to move it back up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and right click and click reset. And as you can see, it's gonna have this slide up animation. And we're gonna go ahead and make sure to turn on motion blur and then also turn on motion blur on this layer. That way it has a little bit of this zoom up. And now you can see the glasses are kind of zooming up like that. We can even easy ease them by highlighting them and clicking F9. It'll just smooth out the motion a little bit. And now back in our composition, you can see our glasses are sliding up like that. So it's already becoming a little bit more of that transition we want. We can even go to our mask real quick inside of this settings here, inside of our composition and go to mask and then just feather it just a little bit. That way it's not as harsh. Something like 10 pixels will work perfectly. So now it's not as much of like a harsh edge and it's more of a blended edge. So now to get the zoom through, we have to actually go ahead and increase the scale and position. So we're gonna keyframe the scale and position on this first frame. So we're gonna go right where the clip starts and we're going to scale it in and move the position. So for the first frame, you want it to show, but not like be completely out of frame. So like you don't want it to be like where you can not see it at all. So for us, the first frame, will be something like this, where you can kind of see the outline of whatever you're zooming through. And then we're gonna keyframe the scale and position and go all the way to the end and then go ahead and reset it and then easy ease those keyframes. So now we have a lot more of that transition we're looking for. And another thing we need to do is just make sure that motion blur is checked. It's gonna sell the effect a lot more already. And as you can see, we're already getting way, way closer to the effect that I showed you here. You can see we're still missing a few things like some shakes and some blurs. <laughs> to sell it, 
but overall we're getting very close. So the next thing I'm gonna do is actually when we start zooming through Trippy's glasses, I want his face to come into focus, but then the background to go out of focus. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and use Gaussian blur and apply it to this background clip. So right around here is where we're gonna start the blur and it's gonna be at zero. And then by about this time, I want it to be closer to like 30 or something like that. That way it goes out of focus. So then we can easy ease that. And as you can see, as it zooms out, it starts becoming less and less in focus, which honestly we can go ahead and make happen a little sooner and also maybe a little bit more intense. It's just gonna take playing around with it, seeing what you like. And then we're going to do the vice versa of that actually. So on this clip here, we're gonna go ahead and blur it from the start. And then as it gets to like right about here, we're gonna bring it into focus. And that's just gonna make it seem like it's coming from something really close. Like if you hold your hand in front of your eye, you won't be able to like really focus on your eye unless you like really try. So that's gonna sell that effect a little bit more. And we can even have it end a little bit sooner and maybe be a little less intense. Another thing you can do is actually change the color of the clip you're zooming into to kind of blend it a little bit more. So we can make it really simple by just adding brightness and contrast on and then bringing down the brightness a lot. So on that first frame, it's gonna be like very dull. And then by here, we'll make the brightness back up to zero. So just a quick little blending technique that will allow you to kind of blend it in just a little bit smoother. Now, one of the things I wanna do is actually go ahead and add on some shakes to kind of ramp up the energy and make it like seem more of like a transition. So I'm going to make an adjustment layer over these two clips and go ahead and go to Shake Sauce 2. If you guys don't already have Shake Sauce 2, go ahead and click the link down in the description. It's gonna give you a seven day free trial. You can try out Shake Sauce 2, 100% risk-free, cancel anytime before that seven days and you won't be billed. So it's by far the best plugin in all of After Effects. So go ahead and try it out. Been working on it for nine months and I'm gonna show you some real sauce on how to use it right now. So inside of Shake Sauce, there's these constant presets. I'm actually gonna apply this shaky hand preset onto this adjustment layer. And it's gonna load up. And if we play it, you can see it's already a very intense preset and it looks pretty cool like that, but that's not exactly what I'm going for. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and open up the position, rotation, scale, and flicker inside of Shake Sauce 2 here. And then at the end of the clip right here, I'm gonna keyframe the position amplitude, the rotation amplitude, the scale amplitude, and then the flicker amplitude, and then go right to where the beginning of the effect kind of starts and takes place, and then change all of those values to a zero. That way it kind of just ramps up with energy. That way it kind of ramps up with energy as we get closer to the effect being done. And as you can see, it has a lot more of this like kind of like shake to it. And you can play around with the distance of these keyframes. If you want it to start earlier, you can. I just think it looks good about at the time where it kind of like his glasses start coming in. So around here, and then I'm also just gonna easy ease those keyframes. And then because we made this adjustment layer and it ends abruptly here, I'm just gonna go ahead and add another shake preset. So inside the keyframe, I'm gonna add one on like quick or maybe something like Twitch. That way it just sells the effect a little bit more. Let's go ahead and try out Twitch and see what we like. So that's a little bit more of an intense one. I think that looks crazy actually, but if you want something a little bit more light, the cool thing about Shake Sauce is you can try out these different presets without having to delete. So if you're selected on the layer you just applied it to, so the Shake Sauce control layer with this preset, if you press U, you can see where your keyframes are. So this is the Twitch one. If we wanted to go ahead and just replace it with the quick, all we have to do is highlight on the layer and then just go ahead and click apply. And it's gonna go ahead and apply the quick one. So it's really cool. You can go through and kind of test out a bunch of different presets and see which one looks the best on your clip without having to delete it. I personally think the Twitch looks really cool. So I'm gonna leave that one on. And then just like that, we have this transition. And if you go ahead and add on the songs, I just think it makes it sound a lot cooler. Yeah we have our transition. That's pretty much all I got for you guys in this one. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to drop a like. If you're not already subscribed, be sure to do that. And if you wanted access to Shake Sauce 2, go ahead and click the link. You'll get a seven day free trial where you can try it out 100% risk-free. But that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this one. Peace.